Hello everyone, I'm the Mass Analyst. I'd like to talk about the use of copyright law for a purpose that copyright law was never intended to serve, and that is to protect people from libel. Now if you watched my past few videos, uh, you'll be aware of the amendment situation. BCJ999 made a video in which he included a Photoshop picture, and that picture had Amendum's face uh, and body, Amendum dressed up as Adolf Hitler with a Hitler mustache. Uh, and and Menden doesn't like this, and so he sent in DMCA against that picture and against a number of other videos that are using that picture. Now, is this the proper use of the DMCA? I, I posit it's not. Uh, the DMCA was never intended to protect people from libel. Suppose someone on YouTube is suspected of wrongdoing, of I don't know, making death threats or uh, pedophilia or whatever. Suppose someone is suspected of wrongdoing and somebody else wants to expose them and they make a video in which say they just used one frame of their video and they put together evidence exposing them. Now they may or may not have the story right uh, but the person who's being exposed could simply say you're libeling me, you're libeling me. They send in a DMCA to YouTube and they get the video removed. And they try perhaps uh, to, to bring this into court through the DMCA. The problem with this, and it's a good thing for innocent people to be able to protect themselves from libel, I have nothing against that, that that's perfectly fine and that, that's really, that's a good thing. But the problem is that you are allowing you are allowing scoundrels to have a veto. This is the scoundrel's veto. It makes it very difficult to put together expose uh, documents. If anyone could just allege libel without producing any proof whatsoever that they really have been libeled uh, and getting videos removed because of this. This is an improper use of the DMCA. Uh, it's not what it was intended for. Uh, there are other ways that somebody who has been libeled can respond. The simplest and easiest way is to make a video yourself if you've been accused of something you uh, didn't do or if you've been libeled. The easiest way is to make a video response yourself in which you deny the charges, provide evidence that the charges are trumped up or what have you. Uh, that's one venue, one way of countering it. The other way of countering it is to actually start a libel suit. If you feel like you've been libeled, uh, you could uh, sue for libel. So those, those are the two recognized ways of dealing with libel charges. The DMCA, as I mentioned, was never intended for this situation. Let me tell you, uh, let me read a quote from one well-known legal scholar who has studied this matter in great detail. Okay, and here's what this uh, noted authority said. He said, the purpose, and he's talking about the purpose of uh, copyright law. He says, it's intended to protect the value, the commercial value of intellectual property for the purpose of encouraging people to be inventive. Okay, let me read that one more time by this noted legal scholar. He said, it's intended to protect the value the commercial value of intellectual property for the purpose of encouraging people to be inventive. Oh, I'm sorry. I made one small mistake. I said that this person was a noted legal scholar. All right. I lied. This person is not really a legal scholar, but you might know him. His name is Inmendum. And I'll post a link in the sidebar to the video in which he stated this. Uh, it's the video called Copyright, New Video Series Includes Patents and Such. And if you forward to about 1 minute and 44 seconds into the video, you'll see him state that. Now, although he's not a legal scholar, Emendum came very close to getting it right. The founders of the Constitution gave Congress a mandate to make copyright law in order to provide an environment in which new works would be created, in which people would be able to create works that would give us a better understanding of our world. Copyright law encompasses a balancing of factors, as I've mentioned in previous videos, 
and as I mentioned on my website and I'll include links to previous videos in my website about the purpose of copyright law it, incur it, in it has two countervailing factors built into it on the one hand it gives authors control of their works or a limited control on how their works can be used and enables them to profit from their work on the other hand it recognizes that in order to create new works people often have to build upon all previous works so it gives them limited rights to use the works of the works that have come before them this right to use other people's works without asking their permission under certain circumstances is called fair use and I thought it would be fun to do a little fair use analysis of the photoshopped image of uh, Emendum's video now there are four prongs of the fair use test or four characters or aspects of the fair use test and some of these prongs have subtests so let's take a look at this uh, now the fair use is a balancing act of these different prongs and sometimes courts may weigh one uh, one subtest more heavily than the other so it's up to a court to decide uh, whether it falls within fair use or not but these are the factors that will be considered the first factor is actually divided into three sub factors the first factor is the purpose and character of the use including whether such use is for commercial purposes or for nonprofit educational purposes and this is uh, this factor as I mentioned is divided into three sub factors the first one is it for commercial use well the Photoshop picture was not for commercial purposes. Uh, BCJ, and as far as I know, no one else is trying to sell this to raise money, to make money. So therefore, that sub-factor points toward it being fair use. Then, does it fall within the purpose of the fair use exception? There are certain uh, uh, uses that are more likely to be favored as fair use, uh, such as criticism, uh, and comment, parody and satire, scholarship and research, news reporting, and teaching. Quite truthfully, I think that the Photoshop image falls under uh, parody and satire or perhaps commentary, but let's assume that it's libelous. Let's assume that the court would rule, hey, this is not comedy, this is not satire, whatever, this is libel. Well, if that's the case, then this would strongly point against fair use. The third sub-factor is, is this transformative? In other words, has there been significant additions made to the original artwork that it transforms it into something else? Well, the, uh, the Photoshop ic uh, image of Inmendum as Hitler is transformative as hell. So this factor would point toward fair use. So two of the three sub-factors point toward fair use and one of the three point against it. But we will say that because libel consideration is so strong, we'll, we'll, we'll call this first factor test uh, pointing against fair use. The second factor is the nature of the copyrighted work. If the work that's being copied is uh, is factual nature if it's say uh, a news report or what have you it's more likely to be used uh, viewed as fair use than if it were literature or music now it's hard to say what the original was all about now most of Inmendum's uh, works do tend to be of the reporting nature but it's really hard to say whether this uh, snapshot was taken from something that would be categorized as literature or what have you. So let's ignore the second factor since we really don't know what video this was taken from. The third factor is the amount and substantiality of the work. How much of the work was taken? If it was just a small portion of the original work that was taken, then it's likely to be fair use. If it was a large portion, all the things being considered, it's likely to point toward infringement. Well, only one one snapshot was taken suppose there are uh, 30 uh, 30 frames per second an average minimum video runs uh, seven minutes I'm going to let you do the math but the amount that was taken for use 
was insignificant. This factor points very strongly toward fair use. The fourth factor is the effect uh, of the use upon the potential market uh, for uh, Amendum's videos. Well, seeing how, as far as I know, Amendum is unlikely to make any money off of his videos, and even if he were, uh, this snapshot, this photo, uh, this Photoshop, is not going to act as a substitute for the videos. In other words, people aren't going to buy the Photoshop uh, picture. They're not going to use the Photoshop picture as a substitute for Amendum's videos. Since that's not going to happen, this points very strongly in favor of fair use. So the if, if we're doing this strictly by math, we've got one factor, the first factor, uh, pointing toward infringement, copyright infringement. The second factor we're not considering since we don't know what video it was taken from. And the other two factors point in favor of fair use. Now again, uh, different judges may weigh the factors differently. It's possible a judge could weigh the libel factor as being so strong, uh, so important that uh, it overwhelms the others and that this is not fair use. However, we should keep in mind that BCJ, as I mentioned in my last video, BCJ stated explicitly that the Photoshop, he made the photoshopped image because Mendem was blocking people right and left. He didn't like Mendem's behavior. And in fact, he stated explicitly in the video in which the uh, photoshopped image appeared, he said, I don't think you are a Holocaust denier as such, or you're not explicitly a Holocaust denier. Um, and even if he said that uh, Menem was a Holocaust denier, there is a difference between being a Holocaust denier and a hater of Jews. Uh, it's not as as a virtual Holocaust might point out, it's not necessarily a one-on-one -on -one correspondence. But he explicitly stated that the reason he made the video was not to convey uh, the notion, the idea that Menem hated Jews. He stated that the purpose was to convey the notion that Amendum is a bully, that he doesn't like the tactics that Amendum uses on YouTube. Since he stated his purpose, purpose explicitly, he stated the message that he intended to convey within the video that carried the photoshopped image. Uh, it seems very hard for me to believe that uh, a judge would consider this libelous. So I think the odds of Amendum's winning on fair use grounds or on, on copyright grounds uh, that this is a copyright infringement are very, very close to zero. Now, since the probability that Amendum would win a copyright suit in court is about as likely as George Bush winning a Nobel Peace Prize, one wonders why he's going through this route. Why is he going through copyright law rather than libel law? I think we might have a hint at an answer. I'm going to show you uh, two short comments, one by myself, actually it's only part of the comment that I made, but it's the relevant part, and in Mendham's reply. Good points. He will argue this is slander. Libel is the better term, and that fair use doesn't cover slander. But copyright law was never intended to address slander slash libel. There's a whole other body of law for that. Libel law. And Mendham responded to me by saying, M.A., you really should understand that I can file more than one claim in a court case. The copyright violation is almost irrelevant, just relevant enough to get me in court. I'm primarily suing the fucker for defamation and malicious slander. As most slander is governed by state law, it will probably have to be in state court. But maybe I'll make the damages high enough for a federal case. Now I'd like to post a link in the sidebar to that comment that I made and in Menem's reply. Unfortunately, they were made on a video that I believe was DMCA'd and has been removed, uh, one of Jones R's videos, so I can't post that link. I do want you to review uh, the comment of Inmendum that I quoted earlier, in which Inmendum talked about the purpose of copyright law, and I also will post a link to, I think, a brilliant video uh, by Eternal Undying Love, in which uh, she quoted uh, or provide copies of Amendum talking about uh, the DMCA. Uh, I'll provide that link in the sidebar and I'll also provide a link 
to one of the videos, the original videos, where she got her clip from. I think there may have been two or three videos that she got clips from, and I don't have the links to the originals, so I'll let you at least see one of them. Uh, and if I get the link later on, then I will uh, post the other links uh, to the original videos, so you can view them in context yourself. Now, I'm serious. Take a minute now and review those uh, links, re review those videos before going on. Okay. I hope uh, I'm going to assume that you've looked at those videos, you've looked at an amendment talking about copyright law. Now I'm going to base what I say, uh, what follows, on those videos and on the comment that Inmendum posted in response to my comment. From what I say, uh, from from here on out, it is going to be speculation. It should be not taken as a statement of fact. Don't sue me because of this amendment, because I'm not saying this is a fact. I am instead making a guess as to your state of mind, what you're thinking. I speculate in Mendham that you know damn well that this isn't the purpose of copyright law. I speculate in Mendham that you know that you don't have a chance of winning this on copyright grounds, that this isn't what copyright law was intended uh, for. I speculate in Mendham that the reason that you DMCA the videos, the reason that you are pursuing this under copyright law is because there are protections. There are protections against uh, piercing anonymity. You might want to get these people's I IDs. You want to get might want to get their docs. You can't just write YouTube and say, "Oh, he's been bad to me. He called me Hitler. Please let me know who he is." You can't just do that because YouTube isn't going to just surrender uh, docs. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm sure you'll be. Uh, more than happy to correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, didn't you try to get fake Sagan's docs from YouTube in uh, your threatened lawsuit against him, and, but YouTube wouldn't uh, cough them up? The way you should be going about this, the way that is recognized, would be to file a libel suit against those who are accusing you of being Hitler or Hitlerite, Hitler-like. Uh, the real way is to file a libel suit, and after you file the libel suit, you would subpoena YouTube to get the documents of those who you wanted to sue. Now, YouTube may have the documents of some, the, those who are partners like BCJ and not others, uh, but they could at least provide you with the IP, and then you could use that information to subpoena the IP providers and get the docs of uh, the people who you want to sue. Trouble is, as soon as you sue YouTube to get their docs, uh, then YouTube will send a message to them and they'll have a chance to quash your subpoena. Now unfortunately for you, and fortunately for everybody else, there is ample precedent uh, to show that the Supreme Court, that our judicial system, recognizes the right to speak anonymously and they're not going to uh, allow YouTube to cough up that information uh, unless you can show, you can provide some sort of showing that you're likely to prevail in a lawsuit. Now I'm going to post a link to uh, my blog in which I discuss this in quite a bit of detail but there is a series of court cases and they're not just going to uh, peer, allow you to pierce your anonymity just because it hurt your feelings. You'll actually have to show them that uh, you have a realistic chance of prevailing in court. Now, you might be able to show them that in your lawsuit against Jones R. I don't want to call which way, but I, I don't want to call uh, how that's uh, going to go because Jones R has said some things that go a bit further than BCJ or anyone else has said. So you might have a chance against him, but to try and sue BCJ and get his docs because of this uh, through the legitimate way, I don't think you have a ghost of a chance especially since BCJ explicitly stated that he doesn't believe you are a Holocaust denier and he explicitly stated that the reason he did the photoshopped uh, Hitler in Mendham picture is because he doesn't like the way you use blocking as a bullying tactic. So I don't think you have a chance of getting his docs if he tries to quash your subpoena. Similarly, similarly I don't think you have a chance of getting voices in the heads uh, slash soup excellencies docs uh, when you try and subpoena him 
uh, when you try and sue him for uh, his calling you a litigious motherfucker. I, I don't see that that's going to go anywhere. It looks to me, in Mendham, like you're trying to do an end run around these constitutional protections by using the DMCA for a purpose that was never intended. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. I should have mentioned this a few... I, I, I used to be mentioning this. I used to mention this in past videos, and I've forgotten to mention it in the past few videos. So let me post this disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, and you'd be better off uh, entering the Olympic javelin catching contest than taking legal advice from me. However, it seems to me like what you're trying to do is abuse the law to get docs uh, to force these people to file a counter in order to keep their movies up. And when they file that counter, then they have to drop their own docs. They have to give their own uh, information to you and in order to get their videos put back up and in order to avo avoid having their YouTube accounts put in jeopardy. Now, I've made many videos on this topic. Uh, I think that the DMCA is unconstitutional in that it forces somebody in order to defend their videos to give up their names, and I think it's unconstitutional for that reason. Whether I'm right or wrong, clearly this is not the intent of copyright law. Clearly it looks to me, in my humble and constitutionally protected opinion, like you're trying to sleaze your way around the protections offered by our legal system in order to get your doc in, in order to get documents and this isn't really about fair use at all this really isn't about whether they're hurting your copyright because let's face it your videos have in my opinion absolutely no monetary value whatsoever I'd be amazed if anyone is willing to pay money to see your videos I don't think to my knowledge that you're marketing those videos uh, so it couldn't possibly hurt your economic commercial interests. Now, look, look over your past videos. Watch yourself uh, talk about the purpose of copyright law. And that's why I think that, uh, that you're doing something wrong and you know damn well. Again, my constitutionally protected opinion of what I imagine to be your state of mind. This has been the Mass Analyst under an N.